Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Okay, so there's a thought that I want to share with you and that I want to just kind of let you sit there for a few seconds and just kind of ponder what I'm about, what I'm about to say. Okay. Um, it's my fifth time attempting this. So, so it dawned on me earlier, just a little bit earlier that, um, my entire video is really my, all my, my channel, all my videos are really doing one thing. It's convincing you that it's okay to be happy. I mean, how bad is it that you have to convince people that God loves them? <sighs> you know, all the hell and damnation, the judgment, the you're going to hell, you're a sinner, you're not worthy, you're not good enough. Honestly, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. And you know what? It's all a lie. Every, see, everything that you were taught was a lie. God does love you. The whole reason you're here was to enjoy this experience. That's why God made this. Man, the church really took a left turn somewhere and they went way off into Wackyville. I mean, wh what else is there to say? It's, it's called the good news for a reason. It's good news. You walk into church, that's not what you're hearing. I mean, people should just be happy and grocery shopping with the biggest smile on their face, going to church, hugging and loving. And I'm not saying you're supposed to be a good person. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, it's called good news for a reason. It's like it sets you free. You were set free before you were even born. But that's not what you hear. All you hear is about how you're no good, how you're going to hell, how you're a sinner, how you were born into sin. All this stuff is bullshit. You were born into the most magnificent creation ever created, ever. And it was created for you as a gift, not a punishment. That's the lie. I mean, think about how sad it is that you have to really work hard to convince people God really does love you. That's not even a question. That y you don't have to earn God's love. God's your father. He, he, you, the minute you were born, you were loved for all eternity. And the whole reason God created this experience, this, you know, the Alpha, the Omega, this, this 3D dimension was for you to enjoy this experience, to create and, and to just live. To live abundantly, as God says multiple times in the Bible, to be wealthy, to be prosperous, to be happy, to live with happiness, joy, and love in your heart, and not fear. But is that how people are honestly living? And I'm talking about people that have gone to church their whole life, that have dedicated themselves to the church. No, they live in absolute fear. Anybody who teaches fear, shame, guilt tripping, any of that stuff, feeling bad, oh, you're bad, you're not, those people are under the devil's command. Period. End of sentence. All God ever wanted was to love you. He just wants you to open up. You don't have to pay him. You don't have to give him 10% of your tithes. You don't have to freaking earn it. You don't have to buy God off. You don't have to live a perfect life and perfect and sinless or you're going to go to hell. I mean, all of this stuff is just really twisted. You know what's sad is most people don't believe that you're allowed to just be happy for no reason 
at all. I mean, that's how bad we've gotten with these rules. Like, there's, there's rules around happiness. Think about that for a minute. Most people believe, like, well, well, why are you so happy? You didn't buy a new car. You didn't buy a new house. You didn't get a new girlfriend. You didn't, you didn't do a new drug. You didn't get high. You didn't get drunk. I mean, that's literally, do you know why some people drink and do drugs? It's a hall pass. It's a, it's a permission slip. It's a permission slip just to be yourself. To laugh, to have a good time, to enjoy life. And if you don't do it, people look at you like, well, what's wrong with you? It's like when the hall, you get, the teacher gives you a pass, you know, so when the hall monitor stops you, you say, oh, the teacher gave me a pass to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Because otherwise you're not allowed to go to the bathroom. You know, we, we learned this when we were going through our master certification in hypnosis. It was like, it's essentially, it's a hall pass. It's, it's, a, it's a, what we call a permission slip. So when people get up on stage and act like Elvis Presley and they sing and dance and do, you know, just do crazy stuff or maybe, maybe somebody deep down inside is a natural comedian. They love it. They're really good at it, but they're too ashamed to do it because they've been punished. They've been shamed. The narcissist in their life stung them, shocked them, hurt them every time they made a good joke. They did something that was good. And that's what's happened to all of us. So now they can tell their friends and family, hey, hey, it's not me. I was hypnotized. Now I have an excuse. In other words, even though you are the talented one, you are a really genuinely good comedian, actor, singer, dancer, artist, painter, whatever, you're not allowed to do that. But if you get a permission slip from a hypnotherapist that says, I've hypnotized you to be happy and not crappy. As long as everybody knows, well, it's not him. Therefore, he's not the one who actually gets the reward for it. All the narcissists around you in your life, they'll be totally fine with it. Because, hey, it's not you. It's a permission slip. I started um, dating this young girl. I think I was about 26. She was about 21, 22. Her name was Kelly. Maybe I was a little bit younger than that. might have been... I don't remember how old I was, but she was a cool country girl. And um, I remember one day we went to her house, probably a third time we went to her, her house, her parents' house, I should say. And we went up the steps and it was about, had like five, or six, seven steps up to the front door. And this guy pulls up and he gets out. Hey, Kelly, how's it going? He's like, oh, hey, what's going on? And I, and I mentioned something. I said, well, that guy looks kind of angry. And she says, no, no, he's a really nice guy. It's like, Really? So she said, oh, you should see him when he gets drunk. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, he is the happiest person you will ever meet on the planet. I was like, really? So the thing about it is the guy needs to drink in order to just be happy. Because he was definitely taught that it is not okay to be happy. Well, I, I mean, unless, of course, you got hypnotized or, or you got drunk or something like that, th then it's okay. Here's the funny thing. It's actually in, in the United States at least, it's ac actually in our Declaration of Independence It's in, in our Constitution. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator, by their Creator, with certain unalienable rights. That among th these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, now let me read these two pieces off. So I actually googled this. So what does pursuit of happiness in the Declaration of Independence mean? It means the phrase actually meant the pursuit of a meaningful life, comma, of a life that provides a person with a sense of satisfaction that what they are doing is worth living for. 
Do you remember when your life was worth living for, when it was meaningful, when, when you got up in, in the morning and you went to school or you went to work and you were working towards your goals, goals that were meaningful to you? An entire country was built upon the foundation of the pursuit of happiness, of a meaningful fulfilling life that is worth living for that's worth fighting for that's why america was so great because it was worth it to us it was worth it to bust our ass to take the risk to do whatever it took to make our dreams come true we literally left ran away from another country fought against another country because of the tyranny it's the whole reason why everyone stormed and left all their European countries to come here. Because they wanted a better life. They wanted a life that was meaningful, that was worthwhile. The pursuit of happiness. And you know what? It's being taken away here. Hell, it has been taken away. We, don't have, the we, we have the pursuit of barely paying our bills. Working our asses off, being stressed if we're going to have work next month. You know, how much more is the rent going to go up, the, the gasoline, the milk, the food? Oh, and God forbid that on top of all that, you're still happy. Can't have that. Now Mr. Narcissist has to come into the picture. If you do not think that these narcissists come in on purpose after people that are happy and free emotionally, you're wrong. This is all being done by them. All of it because if you find your happiness again you're going to open up that artery you're going to open up to the larger right brain and you're going to remember what it was like living this amazing life that was worthwhile that was worth fighting for god we have been so brainwashed it's not even funny we were convinced that god was constantly mad at us that god god was just waiting for us to make one little mistake step on a crack break your teachers back oh you made a minor mistake you're going to hell i'm going to burn you i mean literally that's the that's the way god has been taught to us like he's this evil demonic thing just waiting for us to slip up one time and then they, even if you mentioned the idea of making money, oh, money's the root of all evil. It, it was just this constant pounding and pounding and beating you down every freaking corner. You're just seeking happiness. And any pursuit of happiness became their enemy. If you don't already know this, let me tell you something right now. Once you open up to God again, you will never fall for those tricks again ever. And they are tricks, and they were done and used on purpose. Okay, let me read one more. So, what is the legal definition of pursuit of happiness? <clears throat> the pursuit of happiness is a belief that everyone should be able to follow their dreams and do what makes them happy without, let me repeat that word, without the government getting in the way. This idea is an important part of the Declaration of Independence because that's what Great Britain was doing to, it, to its citizen and us, the colonies, when we were here. But let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me teach you something if you haven't already figured it out. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, the light is shining. And they are freaking out. Our overlords, the narcissists, the serpents in the garden, they know that we're starting to put the pieces together. So the Bible was purposely twisted. You're reading a twisted Bible where it's really not clear. And I'm going to give you an example right now. And they, it, they, okay, so the rulers are the evil uh, narcissists. Okay, those are the people that have been leading us and and changing the verbiage and the words in the Bible, etc. The purpose was to to make sure you don't see what's really going on in the world right now and the way it's been going on for thou literally hundreds more more than let's see yeah more than a thousand years or thousands of years 
things were changed so it could happen right in front of them. It even happened to them, and they really wouldn't realize, like, oh, this is the evil that the Bible's talking about. So we're going to use the King James verse, and then we're going to go to the... It is one of the more original Bibles called the Geneva Bible, okay? So I'm going to read right now the King James, okay? Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 12, King James Version. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So this leads you to believe the spiritual wickedness, you know, in the darkness, spiritual, spiritual, not 3D right here, right now. Most Christians, including myself, our whole educational per experience is about, well, you know, it happened back in the day of Jesus, and it's going to come in the future someday, way, way up there. It's that, you know, they, they're talking the spirit world, but not here. No, they are talking here, and let me give you an example. So the King James Version was, misle it was misleading because it left a key word out. All right, now let me read the same verse from uh, the, the Geneva Bible. Okay, this, the, by the way, this Bible was, goes all the way back to, I want to say it was 1611, something like that. So a long time ago before the King James came along. So the first early edition of the King James Bible was from 1611. So the Geneva Bible was the one that was the more original Bible from before. Okay, so let's read that. Same verse, Ephesians 6, 12, um, the Geneva Bible. For, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the worldly, this is the world, the 3D, and against the worldly governors, meaning the kings, the queens, the presidents, the governors of the world. And then it goes on to say, so I'm going to read that again. So, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against, keyword here, and, and against the worldly governors, the princes of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, which are in ye high places. Now, high places of this world. So when it says ye, it means your high places, not God, not heaven, but this world. So when you read that in the original writing, you're like, wait a minute, they're talking about here and now. Like, yeah, they're talking about our leaders, not just in this country, but other countries as well. So the people back then, they were being taught correctly that your world, in this world, your leaders, these are the evil ones. These are the the people that have dark powers okay so so they got to walk around knowing hey i know what's up whereas us we were lied to the things were twisted words were left out words were changed and suddenly we think oh because i'm telling you all my life until when i went through my first awakening at 28 but even then it still took a lot more than that most of our lives we thought well it's going to come at the end times and it happened in jesus days but but that's not now no most of you probably didn't most of you never even heard that, no, this verse was talking about the kings and the queens and the presidents and the leaders of this world right now. And I don't mean just 2024, but 1800, 1900, 1600, 1700, the year 1950, 1940. It's talking about the entire time. So number one, who do you think twisted the words in the Bible and just teachings in general? Well, that would be narcissist. Why? Because they wanted to hold on to power. As long as they can keep you oblivi oblivious, deaf, dumb, and blind, they get to control things. They get to punish you. They get to torture children. They get to do horrendous things. And no one lifts a finger. Because you don't realize that this is the darkness that the Bible was talking about right here on this planet. Number one, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I absolutely believe, call it the cabal, call it whatever you want, I absolutely believe it is being revealed, they are freaking out right now, and it is going to be torn down. 
so for centuries they have blinded us now here's the thing just like a narcissist because they are narcissists all of them is they will lie to themselves about reality so now that we're waking up they're just like oh no no we'll just keep telling no 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 but wizardry wizardry and they spin their hands and fingers and do spiritual fake stuff oh go to sleep go to sleep we're not going to sleep man the lights on the, the jig is up we know what's up we got it figured out yeah we're sorry about uh we're on to you man so the good news is the light is shining it really is we are going through the great awakening so i said this in the past i i, I didn't say it in this video but a lot of people think the Dark Ages were way back in the King and Queen days, like in the 13, 14, 1500s. Etc. No, we literally just came out of the Dark Ages. Like we were kind of at the very end of the trans transition between the Dark Ages and the, and the, the time of, of light, of truth. So I, I can tell you for sure with myself, I've gone through the tunnel and I'm in the opening on the other side now. My life has changed. I mean, the best way to explain it is I never had to explain. It was a hope that I could one day just be happy and content and I'm there. It's, man, I, I, I would have, it would take a while to explain where I'm at now. I've been this way since the end of January. It is everything I've dreamed of just finally being happy and content and just enjoying life. And the odd thing is I'm doing it during the most tumultuous time in probably the history of mankind. So for those of you who went through the really dark thing the last three, four, five years, and you, you know, I call it the Great Wall of China, where you isolated yourself and you really didn't trust anyone, you are going through the final tunnel. Now, if you're not out yet, you're just lagging behind a little bit. I'm a little bit ahead of you, and that's pretty much it. I, I would say most shoots, maybe three, six months, um and there's going to be it's like a light shift i don't know how to explain it it's just you you slowly start becoming happy again remember the price has already been paid there's no worries okay like enjoy it you know when i hear pastors now say, saying there's a price to be paid clearly they did not understand what happened on the cross that's it guys things are getting better hey if you like this video please click click subscribe click the all bell click the like button and if you want go ahead and make a comment and there's a donation button or link right down there it's a paypal link in the description box god bless you guys go to my website at mikecoline.com and buy one of my dating relationship books i'll see you guys next video bye